Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City with Maria. And uh, we're gonna make some portraits, but I wanted to talk in this video about depth of field. Um, I get this question a lot, and people talk a lot about you know, using depth of field, either shallow or deep, or whatever you wanna do. So we're just gonna kind of run through a really simple portrait setup, kind of the way that I would shoot it. And then we're gonna play around with the depth of field and see if we can create uh, an even better shot um, and, and see how it looks. So, I have my, one of my favorite soft boxes here. This is the Shamira uh, Pro 2, so it's the, the flat front one, so you don't have the edges. It throws a lot of light around. Great if you're only gonna wanna use one light. Um, it's in a Profoto B1X. It's bouncing down onto this white card, which is throwing light back up into her face, creating just kind of a nice even wash of light across her face. First thing I always do is I wanna make sure that none of the light in the space is affecting my shot. So I'm at, uh, let's see, I am at a 250th, a 5.6 at 100 ISO, and I'll make a photo and it should be black, and it is. Okay, so I'm tethered into Capture One here, uh, here so I can see what I'm doing. And I've got my Canon here, I have the 85 at 1.2, because we're gonna play around with the shallow up the field. And like I said, I'm at 5.6. So right now she's straight on to me, I'm just gonna set my focus. Nice and even, as expected. We've got a decent amount of depth of field here, you know, her eyes nice and sharp. You're starting to get a little uh, out of focus back here at the edge of her hairline, but the hair around her face is nice and sharp. And the background, even though we've got this like paneled wall, you can see the line still, so it's got a decent amount of focus, but not so much in focus that uh, it's distracting. Um, let's see, so that's at 5.6. Let's just, I'm just gonna go wide first because people love to go wide open. That's why you buy these lenses, right? So I'm gonna go, let's just do it. We're gonna go all the way to 1.2. Uh, let's see, I'm going to adjust my light using the controller here down. That's about four and a half-ish stops. So let's see if we can get to where we want to be. It's looking right at me. So when you're shooting this wide open, you definitely want to be wary of your focus. Oh, wow. Okay, so we can see. Might even be a smidge dark there. We can definitely see. Her eyes are sharp now, but check out the difference here. You may notice something else interesting about this, the color. And the reason why the color is a little bit weird is because I got the modeling light on and that's affecting our shot. So I'm gonna kill the modeling light. I mean, you could actually shoot just with the modeling light if you really wanted to. There we go. Thought you clean it up, there we go. Now we've got the shallow depth of field with relatively clean color. It's a little bit dark. I didn't do my math exactly right. Let me see if I can get it a little bit brighter. I'm gonna turn this light up, let's say three tenths. There we go. That's pretty much closer to proper exposure. So yeah, you can play around with this um, depending on the look you're going for. And I think if we're going to use a shallow depth of field like this, we should kind of accentuate. She has all this beautiful hair, but I have it all at the focal plane of her face. So let's have you pull it back so I can actually watch it kind of drift back. Yeah, like even with the, yeah, even like kind of just like, yeah, there, right there. That's it, push your chin forward a little bit. All right, now I'm being very careful with my focus. Here we go. There, now we can see it really dropping off. You can see the edge of her face even right here, like just completely going soft and beautiful. Now, see if you turn more with your face like this, good. Now, if you're gonna do this, I can guarantee you one eye is probably gonna be out of focus at this point. So I'm gonna focus on the near eye. If you only pick one eye, you typically wanna focus on the near eye. We can see here that this is creating kind of a, a certain effect. I'm not a huge fan of this. Personally, if I'm gonna shoot somebody slightly in profile, I don't want half their face out of focus. So if we're gonna stay like that, I'm gonna now go back. I'm gonna, let's drift back up to, let's say we go to a two eight. Give myself about two more stops of light. Focus there. Oh, perfect, she puts her to sleep. It's not enough depth of field, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit more. So I'm bringing, bringing the light up one stop, closing down the lens one stop. See that? Go to F4, eyes open, no problem. So now we're at F4, and while it's not tack, tack sharp, across her whole eye, it looks like it's going out right at the edge of the lashes. It's still going to give us 
in my opinion, more superior look, right? So sometimes this really shallow depth of field can look cool, let's say on the straight on shot, but you have to be a little weary if you're gonna start doing um, other poses that it could become maybe too much. Now going the other way, just to kind of show you what we got, we could go, um, we could close down a lot. Let's go one, two, three stops to 11. So this is a F11. This should be pretty, pretty deep focus here. Now, see the background's getting sharper. Just for the heck of it, I'll go another stop to 16. And we're getting closer and closer. Now, the other thing that affects your depth of field, though, another major thing is, is camera distance to subject, and also subject to whatever else is in the shot, I mean, like the background. So if I were to just take Maria and have her go all the ways back, 50 feet, no, it's not that far, it's maybe like four, four more feet back, um, I'm gonna compensate for the distance. My light's turned up all the way, so I'm just gonna close down, back down to 11 for a second, using the inverse square law. And we're gonna see if we, how sharp she becomes relative to the background, okay? So it's a little hot. I was just guessing at that point. There we go. So we can see now the background's getting sharper. And even that's at F11, but even if I were to close down to, let's say, F4, which was kind of borderline before, all kinds of stuff is happening here. It's like three more stops. We should still get a decent amount of depth of field. So depending on, even at F4, we're still getting most of her... Uh, face and her hair, and we're getting a little bit of the background in focus. So again, distance from subject to the background, distance to the camera, and also uh, f-stop are going to be what's going to affect your, your depth of field. So come forward for one last one, because you always have to end with a really wide open shot. I paid a lot of money for this lens. Got to make it happen, right? Anybody who has the, the 1.2 lens knows that you have to always shoot at 1.2. Now, what I think, also I'm a, uh, ISO 100. Luckily, the, it's kind of the end of the day here, so I'm able to pull this off. Sometimes if you want to shoot these really shallow depth of field portraits, you've got to be a little weary because if there's a lot of light in the space, you may not be able to, uh, to pull it off because it starts to, well, you start to pick up too much of the ambient light. Oh, oh one too many. Cut split the difference. There we go. Now I'm back to that really kind of shallow. Give me that like super girl. She, for some reason, she's, you can't see it here because you only see the top half of her, but she has a full super girl outfit on. There we go, beautiful. Nice and shallow, pretty shot, really clean. Playing around with the idea of uh, the color too, by the way, if you didn't notice that she has a red shirt on and you know, with the green background. Think about that when you're working on portraits. It's kind of another way to work. So. Remember, use your depth of field, but don't think you always have to be either wide open or super closed down when things need to be in focus. Every aperture in between has its place depending on what you're doing, and you can create a lot of interesting uh, shots in portraiture with various uh, apertures. So you can follow Maria on Maria Dakotis on uh, all the social media. I'll put the link in the description. Follow me on Facebook, Daniel Norton Photographer. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV, and I'll see you next time on set.